this trade? What does it say about what you, you and your team is trying to do right now? You know, I think we're committed to, uh, you know, our, our plan and articulated strategy is the main thing, which is to, to find a nucleus of young players we do believe in building through the draft. And so whenever we have an opportunity to have, you know, very valuable draft capital, not only a lot, but very valuable draft capital, an extra one and an extra two in the next three years, you know, so for the next three years, we're going to have a minimum of three picks over the first two rounds. Uh, we like that positioning. And, um, you know, as I said, we have a plan. We're going to stick to it. We're confident it'll produce results. Will you um, spend any more time with some of the other quarterbacks now before the draft, including like a Paxton Lynch or a Connor Cook, bring anybody in again? Well, not bring them in necessarily, but go to them and maybe do some other workout at all? Uh, no additional time. We feel like we've spent uh, sufficient time to understand who those, those players are and their talents and, and who they are as people as well. Potential franchise quarterback in the so-called second tier? Yeah, I mean, it's always hard to project, right? But uh, if you think of it as a second tier, we, we do anticipate that there will be, you know, good good quarterbacks potentially coming out of that group. But there's just not – the supply of franchise quarterbacks is very, very slim, no matter where you're picking. Um, so it's not a preference necessarily to pick a guy in a, a later tier. It's just an acknowledgement of the lack of supply at the position. The team now has eight picks from rounds three to five. Is, how have you guys gauged the talent pool for that kind of level of draft with all those picks? A strong, I'm not a big believer in, you know, this is a weak draft or a strong draft. Um, you know, I think that plays out two or three years down the road. Uh, I know there's always talk about that, but we feel very good about players you're able to get every year, frankly, um, and in all the rounds. And uh, here we're, we like having more picks, certainly. I uh, feel like we'll be able to get some very good players even outside the first and second round. Hey, Sasha, I think you said that you were going to draft a quarterback somewhere. Do you still expect that to happen? And do you have any kind of idea what round you're kind of targeting a guy? We may, we may not. We, we haven't decided that at this point, Scott. Is the uh, re relative to the thought that there are plenty of years and you just look at top ten and say that wasn't much of a, uh, a crop there? This 2005 was uh, come to mind for me as one of the curious ones, but there are those. Mm -hmm. Relative to uh, uh, past drafts, how strong is that uh, top of the draft and then maybe on through the first three rounds this year? Yeah, so I think it's always hard to, in the current year, project how strong the draft class is. I'm not a big believer in that, but certainly. Uh, in retrospect, you look back and you realize there was some weakness in certain parts of the drafts or, or certain drafts as a whole. Um, generally, at the top of the draft this year, and this is a little bit of what I was speaking to in terms of pick eight, the thought is that there's a lot of talent, particularly high, but also some depth through the first several rounds. Um, so I think a generally strong draft class and people go position by position, but we're less focused on that, more focused on the players who will acquire and we feel confident about where we're positioned. A lot of teams have two trains of thought when it comes to making selections. Best player available or draft by need. Um, obviously, as you increase the volume and what you have available to you to spend here, um, where do you fall there? Best player available or by need? Yeah, one thing we like about having a lot of picks is you don't feel the pressure, the inherent pressure that if you feel like at a position you're a little void of talent, that you have to reach for a player. Um, so this is good just as a check against our own biases, um, the, the volume of picks that we have. Uh, but we do want to find the best player that we can at each position. And um, you know, over time, we think if we're consistent with that, um, obviously free agents is another place that you can address positions specifically. Um, but we, we don't want to get to a point where we're taking a lesser talent uh, just because we need to address a position.